Hello everybody, how's it going? Today's Friday, and you know what that means. Laundromat. Um, or it means um, Friday Reads, um, or it means TGIF, or it means um, the day you have french fries, um, or fried eggs. As you can see, I'm not at the top of my game right now. Um, but I wanted to do a review of um, the two Thomas Ligotti books I read. Um, and I feel like because I read these two, I should have read them in the Penguin edition that has them both together. Um, but for some reason, I thought it would be better to read them separately. Um, to be honest, I read Grimscribe first, and then um, I didn't know I was going to go straight into, um, what is it, Songs of the Dead Dreamer, um, or of a Dead Dreamer. And I think what happened was, was that I read Grimscribe, and I was a little let down, but I'll tell you why, um, before you start jumping to conclusions here. Um, if you recall last month, I read, um, Teatro Grotesco, and that was probably one of the best short story horror collections I've ever read, especially by, um, an individual author. And, um, to me, the tone, the seriousness, the paranoia, the playfulness, the, um, the commentary underneath those words in, Teatro Grotesco is Thomas Ligotti. Like, that is definitely a unique voice, and that voice is his. Now, um, Grimscribe, the stories from that, were written roughly ten years before that. Um, and I think the problem is is that Teatro Grotesco was so good that I was yearning for more of that. And Grimscribe is not like that. And um, it is very much someone who really loves Lovecraft writing stories that are very Lovecraftian. Now, what I will say, if you really like Lovecraft and have been just dying to find somebody to carry that torch that Lovecraft left, I would say pick up Grimscribe, give it a read. It is very reminiscent of Lovecraft. Um, where I think it fails in doing that is um, when you read a Lovecraft book or when, like a collection of his stories or whatever, you read it and the language used is a certain way. And how the sentences are structured are a certain way. And um, there is this antiquarian feel with Lovecraft that I've never been able to find with anybody else. And there's even writers of his time that tried, um, that didn't measure up. And there's even writers from 30 years before Lovecraft who were doing the same things Lovecraft was doing, and I still think Lovecraft did those things better. Now, the part 
And so with Ligotti doing it, it doesn't feel right to me when somebody modern is writing a modern story trying to use that same prose to try to paint a picture. It's the same reason why I have a hard time with Anne Rice books. Like, I feel like she's trying to be like Mary Shelley or something in a modern setting. And it just, it feels awkward and clunky to me. Um, so yeah, all the hate comments, you could start leaving those below. Um, but where I think Ligotti excelled here is that his stories themselves are probably better stories than Lovecraft's. Um, now I know like Ligotti didn't create Cthulhu or anything like that. So there will be arguments there, but the stories themselves, I think HP Lovecraft really had a hard time like just telling a compelling narrative. Like he did it, you know, but it seemed like a struggle for him. And I think a lot of it has to do with his background in journalism and the amateur press community and the fact that he was writing probably more travel logs than he was writing fiction. Um, at the point in his life when his stories got really good. So a lot of his stories come across as like a reporter or journalism, like just giving you the facts, but like very purpley. Ligotti doesn't do that. There's times when I feel like he tries to do that, but because he's not a travel log writer, um, it doesn't, seem to come natural. And even though he probably is a huge Lovecraft scholar himself, um, I don't think that was enough to be able to mimic that voice. And I'm guessing that he never wanted to mimic it. He wanted it to be himself. <clears throat> but in the Grim Scribe collection, I never felt that he succeeded. Now, Songs of a Dead Dreamer, um, was actually published before Grimscribe. Um, and there's the Penguin. I'll have the picture of it here or there or something. Um, this book is a lot of the same. But there's one story, and I'm pissed that I didn't write the name of it down and I can't remember it, like the name of the story. But there's this one story where this doctor takes his patient to this other guy's house to watch um, the film, to watch some film, basically. And um, this story is so good. This story, whose name I can't remember, this is the spark, this is the, the zygote, if you will, of what Thomas Ligotti's fiction will become. And what it is, is that it's not as cold as all the other stories in these two books. It has a bit of charm, a bit of warmth, um, and it's still horrific. But, and I don't want to tell you what happens here, but um, they he basically goes with his doctor to this house to meet this really strange guy. They go into this room, um, and they watch a film of, we'll say, an experiment. And then once that happens, um, madness ensues. But it's a really good story. And um, it really just jumped out at me way above everything else in the other two books because of the dialogue in it. Arcs of characters in a very short amount of time um, how drastic they are. And, um, it just, it has the feel of Teatro Grotesco 
And this is like way before that happens. And I know there are a couple other books that, or like at least one, um, story collection he has in between those two books and this one. And then I know he did some stuff with a band and the band put music out and he put out like an accompanying book or something like that. Um, and then he did like a bunch of, um, like old, like universal monster takes on certain things. And I haven't read those either, but I'm really like not looking forward to reading those if they lie more into his Lovecraftian work instead of his Legatian work. Because when he's Thomas Legati, like, I don't know if there's anyone who could touch him. Like, if you haven't picked up Teatro Grotesco and read that, you are doing yourself a disservice that is beyond anything. Like... That is the best short story horror collection I've read in I, I don't know how long. Um, I can't, like, just sitting here thinking, I can't think of a better short story collection by an individual author. So I know this review is supposed to be for Songs of the Dead Dreamer and um, Grimscribe, but, um, so, basically, if you like Lovecraft and are looking for the Torchbearer, pick these books up. Um, I don't know if the Penguin edition has, um, like a really cool introduction or afterward or anything like that. Um, if it does and you know, let me know down below. Um, cause I, I would like to pick that one up. Um, but man, like you gotta find Teatro Grotesco. And I said I was going to do it before. I'm going to do like individual story reviews of the stories in that book because they're so freaking good. And um, I wanted to do another video on Conspiracy Against the Human Race, which I read this book with, which I thought was so helpful. So maybe read Teatro Grotesco first and then read The Conspiracy Against the Human Race and um, you'll see a lot of Legati in that. It's just, it's, it's, it's a great book. So anyway, um, let me know down below what you think, and I will see you later. And the video is still playing. I tried to do a cool ending, and I fucked it up. So I'm just going to push stop now.